Hello everybody, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as The Vintage Academic, and I am a graduating senior at UC Berkeley. I, once upon a time, was a brand new transfer student, so in today's video what I want to talk about, given the fact that freshmen and transfer admissions have gone out, is whether or not you should go to UC Berkeley. So like I said, with college admissions decisions going out, you have all of your options laid out in front of you, and you have to decide which college that you got into that you're actually going to go to, which one you're going to enroll in and move to that city and take classes and ultimately get your degree from. As someone who has spent the last two years at Berkeley, I want to offer you some perspective on my experience at UC Berkeley and give you kind of the pros and the cons of going to a school like Berkeley. I'm going to break this video up into three sections. The first one is going to be anything I think you should consider about any university. Then we're going to start with the cons of Berkeley just so that we can end on a positive note and talk about the pros of UC Berkeley. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here are the main things that I think you should consider when it comes to deciding on any university, regardless of if it's Berkeley. The number one most important thing, in my opinion, is financial aid. Especially if you're coming at this as a transfer student, a lot of transfer students go to community college because it's the only college option that was affordable for us. So when you're thinking about making a decision on which university to go to, I think it's really important to consider the financial aid options and see what kind of money you're going to be receiving in order to cover things like tuition, the cost of attendance, as well as the cost of living. For example, when I applied to the UCs and got in, Berkeley was the one that offered me the biggest financial aid package. I received the Cal Grant, the Pell Grant, I got some undergraduate scholarships, and I was also offered some small federal subsidized loans. All of that together made Berkeley an affordable option for me, whereas other UCs didn't offer me as much money and also wouldn't cover the cost of living in places like San Diego or Los Angeles. Which brings me to my second point, which is considering the cost of attendance and the cost of living. The Bay Area is an expensive place, so when you are looking at the different universities that you got into, trying to decide which one would be a good fit, it's important to think not only about the overall program, the coursework, access to research, access to certain professors, but also are you going to be able to afford not just the tuition, but where the college is. Some places are more expensive than others, and even here in the Bay Area, things like gas prices or food and groceries are more expensive than other places in the US. So those are the two most important things I think to consider before thinking about program selection and things like that is will you actually be able to fund the cost of tuition and then being able to live in the city where the university is. All right, so that covers that for the basic general, like this is something you should consider for every university. Let's move into Berkeley specific information. Like I said, we're gonna start with the cons. So let's just jump right into it. Number one, and it has to do with what I've been talking about, the Bay Area is expensive. We all know that California itself is an expensive state to live in and then certain areas of California like in the Los Angeles and the Bay Areas they get very pricey. For example I live in a studio apartment and I pay $17.50 in rent for a studio apartment. Not only that but like I said gas costs a little bit more so if you have a car that might be a problem. Food costs a little bit more. Luckily Berkeley tries to mitigate a lot of these costs by offering financial aid as well as the basic needs center that we have at Berkeley where you can get assistance with rent, you can get assistance with the food pantry if you're learning low on food. So Berkeley tries its best to mitigate a lot of the problems that come with the expensive aspect of living in the Bay Area. The second one, and this also has to do with location, is that the city can be a little bit dicey if I'm being completely honest. I personally have never felt unsafe in the city except for on a couple of occasions, but <laughs> something that's famous amongst Berkeley students is the UC Berkeley Warn Me system. It's basically the university police department notification system so every time something happens we get an email or a text message saying you know avoid the area or this robbery happened at this time and we get those kinds of notifications daily and often multiple times a day that's not to say that Berkeley is more or less dangerous than other large cities especially cities like San Francisco or Los Angeles if we're thinking about California so this might be a con for you but in my opinion I just think that it's common sense to understand that crime rates are typically higher in bigger cities and to have common sense and keep your wits about you when you're walking around the city. For example, don't walk alone super late at night, walk with a friend. And Berkeley also has something called Bear Walk where you can request another student to walk you home. Overall, I really don't feel all that unsafe here, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Number three, again, has to do with geography. The weather here can be a little bit temperamental and this might be a con for you. Personally, it's a pro for me because the way 
the weather goes in the Bay Area, again because it's the Bay Area, is that it's usually foggy and cold in the mornings, heats up in the afternoon, and then gets foggy and cold in the evenings again. I personally love that kind of weather because I like it when it's cold every single day, but I also appreciate the sun, so it's just something to keep in mind. It can be really, really cold here, but it can also be really, really hot. So if you like weather that's more in like a neutral zone or doesn't swing back and forth so much, the Bay Area might not be right for you. Another con that I actually think is silly, but I put it in here anyways, is that you're going to get sweaty no matter what. Something I'm not sure a lot of people know, especially if you're not from California, is that the Bay Area is vastly different from other areas of California. Like I said, it's not always sunny, it's typically foggy, it sometimes gets rainy, but we have a lot of mountains in California, and Berkeley, the campus itself actually backs up to a bunch of hills. So the campus is basically from west to east going up one big hill. I personally walk to campus and walk to all my classes, and it somehow is inexplicably uphill both ways, so I'm constantly sweaty. You basically have to have like a tank top and then also a sweater so that you get sweaty when you're walking to class in your tank top, but then you get cold when you're in the air conditioned class so you can put your sweater on. And then you get hot again when you leave class and then it gets cold when you're outside because it's the Bay Area. <laughs> the next one is it can be really difficult to have a car in the Bay Area. Not only is traffic really congested in the Bay Area, but it can also be really expensive. Again, the cost of gas is really expensive right now. And then the cost of parking. If you are a commuter student and you're going to have to park on campus, those parking permits can get really pricey. And then if you are a resident of Berkeley, you can register your car here so that you can get a parking permit, but it's really hard to find street parking, especially if it's on a game day. However, it can kind of suck if you don't have a car. Berkeley does have a great public transportation system and that public transportation system is free for Berkeley students. And we also have the Bay Area Rapid Transit or the BART train system, which goes between all of the Bay Area cities like Richmond. Richmond, Emeryville, Berkeley, Oakland, San Francisco. But I've noticed that I don't go very many places without my car and that's one of the things that I haven't enjoyed about being in Berkeley. I just really would have liked to have had my car so I could take myself to the Rose Garden or you know, drive home for the weekend without having to rely on the bus systems. The next one is that Berkeley is a really busy city, especially around the campus, like on Telegraph Avenue and like directly downtown Berkeley. There are a lot of people. We have about 30,000 undergraduate students on a relatively small campus. I don't think people realize how small Berkeley's campus actually is compared to some places like UC Davis or UCLA. So we have a lot of people in a really small space and the, the noise and the energy and all that kind of stuff just kind of grinds my nerves a little bit. This might be a pro for you. Some people like busy cities, but for me it was personally a con. The last one that I wrote down is the competitive culture. Let me explain. I do not subscribe to the stereotype that UC Berkeley fosters a competitive environment. I have never actually heard of people like, you know, ruining the curve or deleting all the study notes so that everyone else does poorly on the test or sabotaging tests. I've just, I've never heard of that before. Maybe that's because in my department, the anthropology department, students are encouraged to work collaboratively with each other rather than competitively. But yeah, I just don't get that sense from the campus itself. What I do mean by competitive culture is that Berkeley is a top public university and it attracts really type A high achieving kind of people. And so I think that there's this bit of mm, competition with yourself to do well, and then maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome that is fostered by the fact that Berkeley students are often doing more than one thing. We're often not just students. We're also often undergraduate researchers or running businesses. So I think that the type of person that is attracted to a university like Berkeley is inherently a little bit competitive. I've even heard professors at Berkeley say that it's like a Berkeley phenomenon that students are so stressed out about things like their grades and their GPA when they really don't need to be. I personally just think it's the fact that, you know, it's a it's a top public university and it's that way for a reason it attracts a particular type of student. All right, I think that just about wraps up my cons about UC Berkeley. If you have any that I didn't mention, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments. But for now, let's end on a positive note and move on into the pro of Berkeley. The first one that comes to mind for me, and maybe this is just a me thing, is that there is a lot of access to undergraduate research. We have multiple programs that assist undergraduates in figuring out how they want to do research or if they can do research, what they want to research. The summer undergraduate research program, we have the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. A lot of departments require a senior thesis and a lot of departments have an optional senior honors thesis. So there's a lot of facilitation and opportunity for undergraduate research. If that's something you're interested in. I personally have done a undergraduate research apprenticeship program or a URAP every single semester. And for the last two semesters,
semesters, I've been working on the same one in the archaeological research lab. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for research, which if you're planning on going to grad school is going to be really important. The second one is that you have access to incredible professors who are at the top of their field. I mean, that's why they teach at a university like Berkeley. I know a lot of people might say that professors are inaccessible at Berkeley. That hasn't been the case for me, but again, my department is relatively small and I came into Berkeley as a transfer student, which meant that I was taking upper division courses. And upper division courses typically have a smaller population than lower division courses. So I have had the opportunity to develop really close one-on-one -on -one relationships with my professors to the point that many of them have offered me letters of recommendation for graduate school. I think that the ability to foster a good relationship with professors at Berkeley is also another great avenue for finding research opportunities. Professors also often talk about their own research. So you are on the ground learning about like cutting edge research from the people who are doing the research, oftentimes before the research has even been like published. So that's pretty cool. My third thing is Berkeley is a beautiful campus. This is potentially one of my favorite college campuses I've ever been to. It is one of the oldest universities in California. It was built in the 1860s and we still have some of the original structures with their really cool architecture. And as the campus has been built up, it has kind of collected this really eclectic architectural style. We have like brutalist buildings. We have like this kind of classical building. We have the iconic Campanile, the iconic Sailor Gate. But aside from the architecture, one of the things that I absolutely adore about this campus is its green space. Whoever has been developing the campus has made sure that we still had access to green spaces. So not only do we have like Memorial Glade outside of the university library where most of students come to gather for events or to hang out and study or take a nap in the sun, but we also have like a redwood grove, we have a eucalyptus grove, we have the strawberry creek and just like little nooks and corners of campus that are mostly green spaces and I just think that it makes the campus feel really integrated so it's not like you take a college and you plop it down onto the ground. It actually feels like it has grown up and developed over time. And I just, I love that about Berkeley so much. I, I will never get tired of the way Berkeley looks. All right, the next one is the location. So I know I said that there are a lot of cons about the location of Berkeley, but there's also a lot of pros. Berkeley is in the heart of the Bay Area, which means that you have access to a lot of stuff. There, Oakland is right next door. San Francisco is just across the water. So there's a lot of things that are happening in the Bay Area and you have access to a lot of opportunities. Not only academic things like internships or career development, types of internships, but you also have access to museums. There's the oceans right next door. Things like concerts and events, there's just always something happening in the Bay Area. Next up on the list is really cool classes. Not only does Berkeley have like the classic classes that you'll find at any college university, but we also have, I think they're called discovery courses, where the classes are about something that you would never expect. They're meant to open your eyes. We also have certain course requirements that ensure that we get like a diversity of education, we get the breadth education before we get the depth education in our upper division courses. We have classes like the psychology of sleep, the pursuit of meaningful work, physics for future presidents, earthquakes in your backyard. There's just tons of really cool, very specific courses. In addition to that, however, what I actually want to talk about is something called the DECAL classes at Berkeley. DECAL stands for Democratic Cal, and there are classes that are developed, proposed, and taught by students for students. DECAL classes range in everything from like introduction to neuroscience and psychology to general surgery 101 to the DECAL that I'm taking, which is about Harry Potter. There's DECALs about fan fiction. There's classes about like Pixar films, addressing systemic bias in STEM, 3D modeling and animation. Basically anything and everything you can think of, there is probably a decal course for it. And the great thing about decal courses is that you can actually take them for units that count towards your graduation. So it's not just taking a fun class for no reason, it actually counts towards your ultimate unit total that you need to graduate with a degree, which I think is just so cool. Speaking of things that are by students for students, the next thing that I think a lot of people will find interesting about Berkeley is that we have a club or an organization for everything. Thing. I think Berkeley is one of the universities in the US that has like the most number of clubs and organizations. Student clubs and organizations, I mean. There is something for literally every single interest and every single identity at Berkeley, which means that, especially as a transfer student, if you're worried about making friends or finding a group where you actually fit in, there's gonna be some kind of student organization that is going to reflect one of your interests or one of your identities, and you're going to be able to find other like-minded people who want to engage with you and do things with you. My 
second to last thing is that um, Berkeley is a top public university. That means that you're going to be getting a grade A education. I mean, there's a reason why Berkeley is so competitive to get into. It's because it's a really good school and a lot of people want to go here. So when you go to Berkeley, you can be sure that you are getting a top quality education. And the last thing that I want to mention in my pros for Berkeley, which is going to be very important for transfer students, is that there is a big transfer culture here at Berkeley. Berkeley really likes to highlight and include the diversity of student experiences at Cal, and one of those is the transfer student experience. We have a transfer student center, which again, if you are looking for community, is a great place to go to meet other transfer students who come from similar backgrounds and understand what it is to be a transfer student at Berkeley. And not to mention, the transfer student center was like the first of its kind on the West Coast, and I think it's somewhere, it's like between 20 and 30 years old at this point, so it's very well established, they know what they're doing, and not only is it a place where you can go and study and meet other transfer students, but they also offer services there. You can get counseling, you can talk to an advisor, um, there's printing services, basically anything a transfer student might need, they find a way to provide it. All right, well, I've been talking for nearly half an hour at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. I really hope that this was helpful as you try to decide whether or not you're going to go to Berkeley as a transfer student. To all of my future transfer bears, I am so proud of you for getting in. I personally have loved my time at Berkeley. That's not to say that it wasn't stressful at times, but it was definitely, definitely worth my time and money, and I think that you'll find that it is as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more UC Berkeley content and also future New York content as I go to grad school, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!